Hello, and thank you for coming along to my inventor 3D sketching tips and tricks. More of a what the hell is 3D sketching than tips and tricks, but well, we'll, we'll see what we can do. Now, I've done many seminars in the past on Inventor to, to many people, to many engineering companies all over the world. And when I finish up and I say, right, you know, whilst I'm here, guys, is there anything you want to know? Most people say 3D sketching. I need to do something with 3D sketching or I've heard I can use it, but I don't really know how to work it. And I get that. I completely get it. 3D sketching is useful to many people, but it's not the most intuitively uh, or best designed part of Inventor, let's say. So I thought I'd dedicate a bit of time to it just to give anybody who needs a bit of a head start on it a bit of uh, a bit of a clue on what's going on with it. So here I've got a new part file and on the ribbon bar along the top you see we've got the button Start 2D Sketch. Now I'm in Inventor 2015 uh, which is the current release as of today as I'm recording this video. If you've got a previous version of Inventor the button might look a bit different but it's there, it's in the same place, and 3D sketching is also in the same place, which is, I'll, I'll show you that in a second. So, what's the difference between a 2D and a 3D sketch? You know, you might be thinking, well, do I even need 3D sketch? I mean, what does it do? Well, again, that's the whole point, you know, you might want to know about it, but you don't know what it does. Now, with its traditional two-dimensional sketch, when you hit that button to say start a new sketch, Inventor presents you with a few starting points. Now, the best way to think about sketching uh, with 2D sketches is to take these origin planes, these, this XY plane, this YZ plane, and this XZ plane. If you're on an earlier version of Inventor, they won't be on the screen, but what you will find in the origin folder is they are there, and you'll be able to see them if you just hover over them. Don't click them, just hover over them, they'll appear in the graphics window. Now, if you think of these planes as bits of paper, that's the best way to think about them. Think of them as a bit of paper and you're about to lay your pen on that bit of paper. So creating a 2D sketch or starting a 2D sketch is you placing your pen onto this bit of paper and whatever you sketch, all the lines, arcs and circles that you sketch will be completely restrained and restricted to that plane. So up, down, left, right on that particular plane. You can't go up above it, down below it. It's completely on that plane. So for this plane, you'll be sketching in you know the x y direction so your lines will be going this way and that way and same with the xz plane and the yz plane so if i create a sketch on this x y plane it gives you your sketch plane it gives you your axes it might give you grid lines if you've got them switched on and if you draw a line you can go up down left right you can go all over the shop like this you can zoom out and you can go up here down there way all over the place like this and then when you finish your sketch and then you do a bit of a 3D zoom, you can see your sketch is completely flat, it is completely restricted to where that X, Y plane was. So you can't go up above it or down below it, you're completely stuck on that X, Y plane. Now, that's perfectly alright, In to be honest, in 99.9% .9 of the times, that's all you need, because when you're creating your 2D sketch, you're effectively just drawing a shape, you're drawing a square, you're drawing a circle, and you then extrude it, you then apply a 3D feature to convert that flat 2D sketch into a solid. So you draw your circle, you extrude it, you give it depth, you're giving it mass, you're creating your solid from a 2D sketch. With a three-dimensional sketch, however, you're not restricted to sketching just on one flat surface. You can go look down, left, right, you can go up above, down below, you can go all over the shop. Now you think, well, why? Why would you want to do that? Well, there's multiple reasons why you'd want to do that. You may not ever need to use any, you may not come across any of these reasons. But think of uh, think of a, a pipe run, for example. Pipes never just go in a straight line. They kind of go you know, from the point of source, they go outwards, and they might need to go up over an object, then turn left, then sort of go down a bit. Then, And to model a pipe in Inventor, you can one of many ways is to sketch that profile path, the path where the pipe is going to go up, down, left, right, all over the place, draw a circle, and then sweep that circle along the path. That's one reason. There. Wires, cables, you know, there's, there's loads of reasons, but uh, whatever your reason, uh, this is how you do it. So I'll get shot of my two-dimensional sketch. To create a three-dimensional sketch, you select the arrow underneath this button here, and then you've got start a 3D sketch. And the ribbon bar changes at the top, and this is where it starts to become a little bit kind of baffling. Right? Well, what the hell is a silhouette curve? What, what's an intersection curve? What? 
it, and, and it doesn't really give you much to go off. There's not much guidance here built into the product to let you know what you should be doing. If you say, oh, fine, well, I guess I should be drawing a line, you get this sort of triad appear here, and you're like, well, fine, okay. And you click that, and sort of nothing happens, and it's like, well, well what do I do? I don't understand what's going on. Um, okay, so a couple of tips to get you started, right? This bar here, this is called precise input. It's very useful to have. If you don't have this switched on, on the draw panel, sort of sneakily hidden away, they've got this precise input button here. Make sure that's switched on. And that'll give you this precise input. Still, if you've never seen it before, you're probably looking at it going, what the hell is that? And that's fine. That's fine. Now, don't worry about this yet, but it will make sense. Okay, I'm going to press F6, and that takes us to isometric view. So we've got Z, because traditionally Z is up. Uh, that, that's kind of, you know, the norm, so it sort of gives us a bit of a basic understanding uh, before we kind of crack on. All right, then. So, how do you start with 3D sketching? Right, well, I guess it depends where you want to start your lines from. Where do you want to start sketching from? If you do have a blank canvas like I've got here, you could start sketching from the center point of the model. The center point is where all the axes cross over the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis. Where they all intersect, that's your center point. Good place to start would be the center point. So you click line, you kind of click it there, It's just that's just a little bit annoying. That would be good if you could, but you can't. Just select center point in the browser on the left-hand side, and then your line will start from that center point. Now, if you were to just start randomly clicking willy-nilly, you're going to get nowhere. You're going to have a sketch that's all over the shop. You don't want to do that. You want to be a bit more precise about it. And that's where the precise input comes into it. There's two ways you can be precise about how you get your 3D sketching down. The easiest and most convenient way of doing it is to look at this triad. Now, you've got three planes on the triad, which are extremely difficult to see because they're dead small. Here's another tip. Press escape, go to the application options of Inventor. On the general tab, increase the annotation scale to two or, or whatever is comfortable for you, but that will double the size of all the on-screen triads and prompts and whatnot. So the triad's just that little bit bigger now. You can maybe see better now you've got these uh, three planes to play with. Okay, so when you start your line command off, select the center point, you can then pick one of these planes. Now that will restrict your lines to be drawn purely in that plane. You'll get this little grid axis thing come up and you can then go up, down, left, right and you're purely restricted to that plane. Now you might be thinking, well, I could, I could have done that in the 2D sketch. Why do I want to do a 3D sketch then be restricted to just one plane? Well, you can switch it after you've drawn each line segment. So say for example, this particular line is going to be 50 mil long. Let's just say 50 millimeters long. Move the arrow up until you see the horizontal or the vertical constraint appear. I'm, again, I'm pointing at the screen like you can see my hand, but you can't. Um, but that will say that your line is, is going to be constrained vertically upwards on that Z axis. And then click. And you can then right click and select OK. You've now got a line which is 50 millimeters up in the Z axis. You can then, if you want, just so you've got, you know, you've got a good starting point, a good reference. Uh, for sizing, you can then put a dimension on there and say, well, that's now 50 mil. Great. How do you carry on with this? Well, select the line again. And it, for some bizarre reason, the, the triad's now down there. But I think that's because that's where we finished the line. And when I made it 50, it got a bit bigger. So you can then just select the, select the line button and then move the mouse over the green dot, which is there, and that's where the end of your line is. So you're effectively snapping to the end point of the line. Great. You can then use these planes again to say, well, now I want to go this way in the x-axis. So you can then select this plane here, and then you can go this way, and then you can go that way, and then you can go that way. You're completely restricted to the light, to the axes of this plane. If you want to change it, you can then select this plane here, and now you can go down and across and up and across you can do you can you can then switch between all the planes you can go in any which way you want once you've completed that and you've finished you can then go back to the dimension tool and start putting some dimensions on here but be careful if you've placed too many lines and then you dimension them afterwards it starts 
it started jumping all over the place. You start to, you know, distort the sketch a bit. Things start uh, kind of going a bit out of control. But, you know, do it one small bit at a time. So that's one way of doing your 3D sketch. Another way of doing it is to utilize better this precise input. Start your line command, select the center point, and then understand the X, Y, and Z coordinates. If you want a line to go up in the Z axis, you just want it to go vertically up by 50 mil. You can say, well, okay, I'm going nowhere in the X because you know that is the X direction here. So we're going nowhere in the X, zero, press tab. We're going nowhere in the Y direction, zero, press tab, but we're going 50 mil in the Z axis, press return. Now you've got a line upwards of 50 mil. Now, if you want to come 50 mil in the X axis, you would go, well, okay, I'm going 50 mil in the X, I'm going nowhere in the Y, and I'm going nowhere in the Z. There you are. If you want to combine them, you might want to go, say, 30 mil in the Y, but 10 up in the Z, so you're kind of going up on an incline. You could then say zero on the X, I uh, can't remember what I said, maybe 30, and then 10 in the Z. And then you're kind of going up and along at the same time. So that's, uh, that's another way you can do your, your 3D sketching. But like I said, be very careful about drawing too many lines without dimensions, because when you start placing dimensions, it starts pushing your sketch around. So dimension here, 50 mil. If you change that to 40, it starts, you know, because this line's under constraint, it's going to start distorting to suit the dimensions that you're placing. Uh, however, another tip. If you're not too fussed about placing the accurate dimensions on there because you know you've sketched that using precise input as it is right there it is correct you can then finish your lines in the constraint tab press fix and then just fix the lines just say look I'm, I don't care about the numbers I know they're right I know that's 50 mil and I know that's 30 along in 10 up just fix it it's now fully constrained and you can then use that 3d sketch to do a sweep to do whatever you want. Maybe that is the center line of a pipe and you want to carry on to create the sweep. Great. So in basic terms, that's the 3D sketch. And now you can, if this is for a pipe run or if it is for a wire or a cable or something like that, uh, you can do auto bends as well. You can, it's, all, it's like a fillet. Now you can either ask Inventor to create bends as you're sketching. Um, when you're creating the line, if you right click, you've got the uh, auto bend option here. So when you do two lines, it will automatically create a bend in between them of five mil or whatever this variable is set to. You can do it that way. Alternatively, after you've finished creating the lines and you've just got the hard 90 degree right angles there, you can go to the bend, say, let's say um, two mil, and then hover your cursor over the two lines and then just put that two mil bend on the lines. Simple enough, isn't it? Not bad. It's not that bad at all. Okay, once the 3D sketch is complete, you click Finish Sketch, and your 3D sketch is then appearing in your browser as a three-dimensional sketch. Now, if you zoom around, you can see that that sketch is, in fact, 3D. It's not restricted to one plane. It is going up, along, and then in another direction. You can then do whatever you need to do to create the sweep. I guess if you're a bit confused about how you would do that, I suppose I should probably follow it up. Uh, we're playing on there to there, two-dimensional sketch on that work plane, draw yourself a circle, which is probably not easy to see when you're looking straight on like that, there you go, and five mil, and then, uh, it's probably not best, I'm going to say two mil, uh, finish that sketch, sweep that circle along that path, and there you go, you've got something that kind of looks like a pipe. Okay, a couple of other things you can do inside 3D sketching. A couple of the other, op the other options that are there, which you might be thinking, what the hell are them? Uh, no, I can't go over them all, kind of don't have time. I've talked too much already as it is, and uh, it'll go on for a bit too long if I cover them all. Uh, but let's just say, let's just create a cylindrical solid. Uh, any size and any dimensions. I am not fussed. Okay, so there's a cylindrical solid. Now what I'm gonna also do is create a sketch, which is gonna be offset from, say, that plane there. Mm, maybe 20 mil. Okay, so just for clarity, I'm sketching, a, yeah, about 20 mil from the center of the cylinder. And I'm gonna create a random line, say, let's just look straight on so I know exactly where I'm sketching. 
let's say about about that that'll do and let's this is uh, there'll be a reason which will become apparent soon whilst of why I'm doing this. Let's make that 70 mil. Okay. So I've got a 70 mil line in the middle of nowhere, kind of offset from a cylinder. Neil, what the hell are you doing this for? Well, if I go back into 3D sketching, I can then say to Inventor, project to surface. Right, okay. Project to surface. If you select the cylinder and then select this little red arrow here for curves, curves is, again, it's bizarre terminology, intentionally there to confuse you, but select that line and then say wrap to the surface it takes that line and it wraps it around the surface of the solid directly in front that's project to surface now the reason I made that line 70 mil long is just for uh, verification that it has taken that line and has wrapped it like for like one to one around that cylindrical surface so if we do measure loop select this line here it's exactly 70 mil long and then what do you do next? Well, these, this work plane and this line here, they're effectively construction geometry, so I can take them and hide them. And then we can go back to our cylinder. What do you do with this? What can I do with it? Well, again, work plane, pick the end of the point, pick that line, it creates a work plane normal to the end point of the 3D sketch. I can then say make a 2D sketch on that work plane, press F7 to slice the graphics. Hey, that's tidy project the geometry of well I need to draw a circle on the end point of this uh, 3d sketch so uh, is it going to give me yep it is draw a circle just just doing this really quickly say that'll do finish the sketch and then sweep that along that path and then you get you know something like that which you would probably not be making a solid you're probably going to be cutting and you get something like that. You know, I mean, come on, you're not going to do that in, in production, but you kind of get the gist of what that is intended for. Another thing we can do, uh, if I just undo all of these, and uh, I'll keep my work plane, I'll delete my sketch. Where's my work plane gone? I hidden it, didn't I? I did. There we are. Okay, if I sketch on this work plane, and I draw a... Uh, let's just do a spline. Let's do a very approximate spline something like that that'll do doesn't really matter finish the sketch I'm going to extrude this spline I'm going to extrude the spline as a surface but I want to go that way now my surface that I've just extruded intersects that solid but what why what what can I do with it now well what you can then do is go into the 3d sketch environment and then say create an intersection curve between the solid and the surface and then wherever the two intersect, it's going to create a sketch line. You can then use that sketch line as a sweep path. Uh, it's kind of broken off the bottom there. The surface needed to be raised a bit, but never mind. Uh, but you can use that as a sweep path for for anything. You can split the solid with it, perhaps. You can, you can do whatever you want with it, but that's that's what the intersection curve does. That's project a surface. And the, I guess, what you would normally use in the 3D sketch, which is the line. You can also do helical curves as well, where you can input pitch and revolution. That bit's kind of self-explanatory. Uh, that will just give you a kind of curvy helical uh, coil type line. And yeah, so that's uh, that's 3D sketching, or as much as I can cover in a video on YouTube, I guess. Um, but hopefully you found that useful. If you did, please press like. Uh, it helps get my videos around. I'm just getting started and I'd like to make some more if they do become popular. So put some comments in the video below if there's anything else you want to see, if there's anything else you want to learn. I'll read the comments and I'll get back to you all uh, with any feedback and new videos that I'm going to create. Thank you very much and thanks.